Calls for a revolution echo around a Khartoum police station. <laughs> Detainees chant rebellious slogans from inside the cell blocks. Many of them are women, and it's not a one-off. This remarkable video that was smuggled out shows defiance from female inmates in another prison. The target of their anger, President Umar al-Bashir, has held power in Sudan for the past 30 years. Here he is looking every inch the Sudanese strongman. But he's under pressure. Because this is what Sudanese strong women look like. Thousands of women are taking to the streets right across the country. Even schoolgirls. One of the most striking things about the wave of protests that have swept Sudan since last December is the huge number of women in frontline roles. President Bashir is blaming the media and what he calls infiltrators and saboteurs for whipping up the discontent and he's accusing them of inciting violence. This mobile phone footage of the presidential motorcade being jeered at has gone viral and it highlights the public's growing anger. Tir Tir Yabashir yells this grandmother as he speeds past. It seems people are becoming braver in voicing their discontent. It appears then that the wall of fear is beginning to break down. But fear in Sudan is both insidious and well-founded. The regime unleashed on the public a fearsome array of security forces from uniformed soldiers to masked militia. On the streets, Bashir's men targeted civilian demonstrators regardless of their gender. When it comes to beating, shooting and gassing people, the security forces here don't seem to discriminate between genders. But because most of Bashir's militia are men, women here are exposed to a different type of abuse. كان ضرب مبرح بصورة متواصلة استفزاز شديد رأسنا ممنوع نرفعه كان خاتلين عصايات في 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 رقبتنا كده وحانينا للاتحاد. This protester says she's still shocked by what she experienced in prison. She told us there were special female units designated to abuse them. هم ما حاولوا يكسرونا ببنادين سنزاتو. وفعلاً هي كان صدمة كبيرة بالنسبة لنا بأنه دايرني أهتف هتاف مع ال مع النظام. إنه أنا قعد أقول تقعد بس ولما أنا ما رضيت ضرب تضرب يعني مبرح جسمي كله والحاجة دي كان حاضرينها كل منسوبي النظام. In this video, a large group of women are led out of a house in Burri, a middle-class residential area in Khartoum. Outside, many were subjected to degrading treatment, including, some said, having their hair braids cut off. A symbolic and calculated humiliation. And it gets worse. This activist was arrested and detained in Khartoum for a week and then released. She's still in Sudan now. We were threatened by rape all the way until we reached the offices of the National Security Services. We were threatened to be raped even inside there. Some of the women who were with us, uh, they told us that they were sexually harassed, they were totally broken down. Uh, one of the young ladies with, with us was subjected to cavity search during the detention. It was totally a shock to her. For a couple of days after that, she was going through a nervous breakdown that we had to calm her down. We've had to hide all the identities of the women we interviewed in Sudan. Increasingly, people no longer want to risk appearing in the media, even anonymously. The fear is back, and it was about to get personal. Article 6162 of the Sudanese criminal law deals with incitement of hatred against the state. Punishments include life imprisonment and execution. It's widely deployed to silence the media, and I was told that I could no longer report and that the charge would be filed against me. I'm just on the way to the airport now and I am quite concerned that I've already been put on a no-fly list based on a conversation I had earlier where they spoke of a criminal case being filed against me for a previous report. They've come publicly now about a campaign against people they call agitators, which seems to be a metaphor for the media. I had the option to get out of Sudan safely, and I did. 
But for those unable to leave, fear of more reprisals from the government is growing. From the streets of Sudan, the protests are spreading far and wide. Here in London, women too are leading the calls for revolution. Women in Sudan have, over the years and actually throughout the past 30 years, since the beginning of this government, been an integral part of political opposition to the government. They have been part of government itself, and they have been part of traditional, uh, sort of old school opposition movements as well. So they've never really been outside the fray, so to speak. Back in Sudan, both the government and protesters' positions are hardening. These are the strongest and longest protests in Sudan since Bashir came to power 30 years ago. And with calls for Bashir to step down getting louder and louder, fear is mounting over how far he's prepared to go to maintain control. That report was by Yusra El Bagir. And we asked the Sudanese embassy for a comment on the abuses detailed in her report, but no one was available.